In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the Coach 7 software to analyze motion in a video. I'm using an iPad, but Coach is also available for Android and desktop computers. When using a mobile device, first download Coach projects, including tutorials and experiments. You can open these projects by clicking on the bottom top left. Under CMA, you can find the downloaded projects and under User, your own projects. If you're new to the program, open the tutorial under Data Video, the start of a sprinter, which will walk you through the process of manually analyzing a video. Coach's interface can be a bit intimidating at first. There are a couple of buttons at the top, I'll explain some of them later. Then there are three windows or panes. A Data Video window, where your video will appear, the actual tutorial showing seven chapters and an empty window. You can change the layout by clicking on the bottom top right. Click Display and Unlock Display. Now you can drag these bars to change the size of the windows. You can also change the overall layout by adding windows. I'll lock the layout for now. I'll now follow the steps in the tutorial. If things are going too fast, just try out the tutorial for yourself. The first step is to add a video. Tap on the wrench, open video, there's the start of the sprinter, which is the video used in the tutorial. You can also use the cameras as a source. Now I'm going to use my own video I've created myself. So I'm going to add a video and you can preview it here. This is the one I'll be using. Okay, this doesn't come out right, it's rotated. Click on the wrench and click adjust, click 90 degrees. That's better. Now you can play the video by clicking on the green play button. You can see the frames at the bottom. 176 frames. Now we'll go to chapter 2. We need to calibrate the video. So click on the wrench and click on calibrate. We need to set the scale. Now this measuring tape has a known length. Now the other end of this bar is hidden because I've changed the layout. So I'll unlock it and move it a bit. There it is. Now this measure is 50 centimeters. So you click skill settings, 0.5 meters. Now coach knows that this part is 0.5 meters long. We're also going to move the coordinate system. I would like to have the y-axis aligned with the tennis ball. That's nice. And the horizontal axis should be positioned such that at y equals zero, the tennis ball is at the bottom. Now you need to click end scaling and you can't move these anymore. We also need a time calibration. Here you can see the frame rate of the video. Now this is set automatically and I'm uh, happy with that so I'll just leave it. Now we need to select the video points. I'll enlarge the window and now we need to go to the first part of the video where it's interesting. Uh, the first frames aren't that interesting. So I'll look up the first frame where I'm going to drop the ball. It's frame 83. And now let's go at the end of the video. I'm going to look at the frame where the tennis ball has stopped moving. It's 150. So frame 150. I'll click on frames. Now here you can see you could use all frames. You can use specific frames, individual frames. I'm going to use this option. So from frame 83 up to frame 150. Step size. Uh, set to 2 means that you'll use every other frame. Otherwise, there are a lot of frames you need to analyze. Now, the next step is to create a graph. The instruction says to create a X graph because that was the start of a sprinter. But here in the video, the tennis ball is moving vertically. So I'm going to use the Y graph. You need to tap on an empty window 
there's the graph, but it's still empty because there is no data. In the next step, we're going to collect data. We need to click another start button at the top. If you click that, Coach will move to the first frame you've selected, frame 83, and then tap the tennis ball at the position where it's at, and then Coach will move to the next frame, and you repeat this all the way to frame 150 in this case. The tennis ball is moving quite fast in some parts and becomes blurry, so just try to click in the middle. Now we're almost at the end of the video here and I'll make a mistake on purpose and I'll correct it later and I'll show you how to do that. And as you can see, the graph is already drawn as we are collecting the data. You can also see the mistake there. So there's one point way up in the graph, it's obviously wrong. And we're now at frame 149. That's the last frame we have selected. Now in the tutorial, it's explained that you can also scan the data which means that Coach will play the video and draw the graph simultaneously. I'll just click the replay button and then you can select the uh, amount of seconds in which the video is re replayed. I'll select five seconds. And if you press play, then the tennis ball is bouncing and the graph is being drawn simultaneously. I'll store my results because Coach has the habit of crashing uh, quite often, so it's, it's a, a good habit to store your results in between. Now we're going to update data. If you made a mistake, uh, you can change the results. You need to go to the particular frame where you made a mistake. So we need to look up the frame where the position was wrong. It's somewhere here at the end. There it is. Now you can just move the point, the data point to the correct position and the graph is updated automatically. Now step seven is to determine the speed of the tennis ball. It mentions the sprinter. We don't have a sprinter, we have a tennis ball. Now I'm gonna make the video a little bit smaller because we're gonna use the graph and we can better read the instructions. Now you need to click on the wrench in the graph you click on Analyze and you can click Slope because the slope in a displacement time graph is the velocity. Just select a point on the graph and then you can move the black line, which should be the tangent line. Now this is clearly tangent to the graph and then the slope at the top, you'll see that the slope is minus 2.60 meters per second. This is only the velocity or speed at one moment. Uh, you would have to do that for each and every moment, which is a lot of work. Uh, Coach can do that for you. It's called the derivative. There are a lot of options here. We need the first, deriv the first derivative. And the method, method we're going to use is differences. I'll change the label here. Let's use velocity. And there the graph is immediately drawn. What this does, it will calculate the velocity using consecutive points. So the displacement between two points divided by the time taken. It will do that for the whole graph and then you get this jaggy line. You can also use smooth and then, well, the graph is smoother. Whatever you like, sometimes the results are not that reliable. I'll stick with differences. If you click OK, you can place this graph somewhere in an empty window. There's no empty window, so I'm going to use the tutorial because I don't need the instructions anymore. From this velocity time graph, you can determine the acceleration by finding the slope. I'm going to repeat the process. I'll use a point somewhere in the beginning and then move the tangent line until it's tangent to the graph. And then the slope is minus 12.37 meters per second squared. Obviously something's wrong because this is a tennis ball being dropped. So the acceleration should be 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, it's larger than that. So you would have to go back in the process to find uh, where a mistake might have uh, popped up. Okay, but this 
This just shows the basic steps to analyze a data video and create graphs in Coach.